you want to talk through it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think that it doesn't have to be refreshed in the memory for business records. Or no, wait, past record. No, okay. I think for past record recorded recollection that it doesn't have to be under the business. I mean, it doesn't have to be fresh in the memory. You know what I mean? I do know what you mean. <laughs> but I disagree. Really, you think it should be? The report actually reports what the... I, I just... I don't know. You don't have to be unavailable. So I agree with that, yeah. So, so you think it's either A or D? I think it's D. Yeah, it's D. All right. I don't know what it is. It is D. Past record recorded recollection exception to hearsay rule is one of the class of hearsay exceptions is not required. Unavailability of the declarant if a witness has insufficient memory of an event to enable her to testify fully and accurately even after consulting the writing given her on the stand the writing itself may be introduced into evidence if proper foundation is laid for its admissibility the foundation of receiving such writing into evidence must include proof that one the witness was at one time had personal knowledge of the facts in the writing two the writing was made by or under the direction of the witness who had been adopted by her three the writing was timely when made after the matter was fresh in the mind of the witness four the writing is accurate and five the witness has insufficient recollection to testify fully and accurately the because the unavailability is immaterial. So I guess they're trying to prove that the bricks were negligently tied and the witness comes in, he said he has coffee and said the load of bricks look kind of loose. Right? Are those the same thing? I think so. You think so? So it would be... Uh, inadmissible hearsay? That's what I think. It's not opinion. And there's no, I was trying to look in there to see if there was some kind of adopted admission, but there's really not. There's nothing showing that the other guy manifested his belief in that statement. He didn't, uh, he didn't deny it, right? But there's no facts saying either way. Yeah. I, mean, I think if they were going for that, they would put something in there. That so you think it's B? Or no, D? I C, I mean, yeah, yeah. Inadmissible here. So you're saying holding the bricks look kind of loose. But wait a minute. The witness is in court saying that. Yes, but he's testifying to his out of court statement. You can't say what you said before. All right. All right, let's go with C. Let's go with C. Is this question, it? yeah, it's B. No! <laughs> Gosh, I'm so sure. The witness's testimony is admissible non-hearsay. The, test, the statement by the witness is not being offered to prove the truth of the matter asserted therein, and thus is not hearsay. Hearsay statement made out of the court, made out of court by the declarant, offered in, in evidence to prove the truth of the matter asserted. Although hearsay is inadmissible unless the exception to the hearsay rule is applicable, a statement that would be inadmissible hearsay to prove the truth. Yeah. 
thereof may be admitted to show the statement's effect on the hearer or reader. Thus, in a negligence case where the knowledge of the danger is at issue, a person's warning of statement is admissible for the limited purpose of showing knowledge or notice on, oh, so it's effect on listener. Hmm. Part notice on the part of the listener. Here only one of the theories of recovery underlying the plaintiff's lawsuit is that the defendant negligently failed to secure the load. Therefore, the plaintiff must show uh, you should, yeah. Therefore, the plaintiff must show that the defendant either knew or should have known that the load was not properly secured. Consequently, the witness's statement that the chains looked loose is admissible to show that the evident defendant had notice of the possible danger. It's, so if this out-of-court statement were offered to show that its contents were true, i.e. that the chains were in fact loose, then it would constitute hearsay. But because the statement is offered to show the notice of the defendant of possible danger, so it is not hearsay. Yes. That was a tough one. Hmm. Effect on listener, right? I thought I had that right. Yeah. Well, I bet we could finish the, this set. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's go to the next one. I don't think it's C. Just throwing that out there. Yeah. It is. Yeah. <laughs> um. Man, I'm not comfortable with A or B either. What about D? Well, I'm reading D because it's going to be worse. It's funny. I, I would think, I don't know what if there's anything barring that. Never heard anything about it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I've heard, like, for doctor patient or tr uh, purposes of medical diagnosis, you say, Oh, my harm, I got hit by a car, I got hit by a bike. That comes in. But if you say, like, this guy did it, mm -hmm. defendant crashed into me, then that's not admissible as, a, as, as what was the cause. Um. I'm gonna go to the answers. I don't think, here, here's the problem. Let me let me walk through this real quick. I think it's business. If anything, it's business records exception. So I don't think A is right because the business record is hearsay. It's just an exception to the hearsay rule, right? Right. So I think A is out. <laughs> B admissible because the operator can't remember the details in the report. That's not why it's admissible. It's admissible because of the business records exception. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, so that only leaves me with D. Yeah. But I don't know. I, I'm going with it's D. Probably C. No, it's A. 
Okay. The report is admissible non here, so the report is an admission by a party opponent because it is stated by an agent concerning the scope of his agency made during the existence of the employment relationship. The operator's statement constitutes a prior acknowledgement of a relevant fact and is admissible against the operator's principal, the city. Such an admission is considered non hearsay under the federal rules. Okay. So here's, here's an important point that I've noticed with Q&A and with this now, is that they call the 801, the 801 exceptions, uh, I think they call them exemptions, and they're not hearsay. Do you understand it that way? They've said this a couple times now where, where it's been an 801 exception, mm -hmm. and it's really not an exception, it's, it's not hearsay, you know? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's an exemption, right, yeah. But I, don't, I feel like we learned it that way. I felt like we learned... I remember she had mentioned it. She said the uh, things are technically hearsay, but we don't consider them as such. Oh, very nice. Well, I don't think it's... Yeah, yeah. Anyway. I'm just going to ask her because if she's going to turn the questions that way, then I want to be prepared for her. I almost sent her this question yesterday. see the answers. Possible choices. I was going to say D or B. Yeah, you want to go? What is being married at? I thought it was just irrelevant. It's the least likely to. Uh, oh. Yeah. All right. Let's go. It's D. You're right. The court would never permit invocation of the phys physician patient privilege if it kept a patient. If the patient knew that the person she was consulting was not a licensed physician, oh right, the patient physician patient privilege requires that a licensed physician be present for the purpose of treatment. Yeah, very nice, very nice.
Well, we didn't do the parole evidence rule, did we? Not in this class. Yeah, I remember we did it in contracts. You think it's hearsay? Let's just do that. Is it offered for its truth or offered for another purpose? I think it's more effect on the listener. I don't think it's hearsay. Yeah. Yeah, me too. I'll get a question 11. Yeah, it's a D. Oh. <laughs> The plaintiff's testimony does not violate the hearsay rule or the parole of the evidence rule. Hearsay is a statement of the one other man of the declarant proves the truth of the matter asserted. A hearsay statement must be excluded upon the objection if no exception to the hearsay rule is applicable. However, an out-of-court statement introduced for any, other, any purpose other than to prove the truth of the matter asserted is not hearsay. Thus, the statement would be inadmissible if offered to prove its truth. It may be admitted to show that the statement's Effect on the yeah effect on listener, effect on the person hearing it. Alrighty, let's go to the next one. You know what? I have to trial insurance coming to the defendant's ex wife. I would say the privilege should be sustained if it was marital communications, but it doesn't say they were married at the time. Right. And it doesn't only apply to criminal cases, right? Oh, I'm going to go with C. Three. Yeah. Yeah, C is the answer. If facts were told the uh, defendant's ex-wife during her marriage, the defendant, he had a privilege to prevent her from disclosing such facts.
What's the D? I don't think it's C, because it can only be proven through extrinsic evidence. I would get, well, I would go with B. Yeah, because I don't think that it's a. It, it can be. I don't think it's C. It can't be proved. It, ha, it can only be proved with extrinsic evidence, and uh, it is relevant. Well, this is not relevant to the main issues, but uh, do you think it's D? I think it's true that it's not relevant to the main issues, but I don't think that's why or whether or not it should be admissible. No, I'm trying to remember. If you when you can bring in extrinsic evidence like that, there are certain situations where you can't, and I can't remember what they are. I'm gonna go to the answers. I, I'm saying C. I'm gonna put my money on C. We'll just see what happens. Okay. It's B. The qualification of a witness as an expert is a preliminary fact to be determined by the judge. The existence of a preliminary fact, competency of testimony, or privilege, other than those conditional relevance, must be determined by the court. These questions withheld from the jury out of fear that once the jurors hear the disputed evidence, the damage has been done, rendering ineffective an instruction to disregard the evidence. The preliminary fact is not found. One of the foundational facts that must be first determined by the judge is the qualification of the witness as an expert. Thus, in this question is the province of the judge to determine whether the witness is an expert in the field of finance so to allow her test so as to allow her to testify further the judge is free to consider any relevant evidence and making the determination so he sh should consider the transcript let's see next question I was going to go with A. A? What were you thinking, D? Well, I was thinking D or C. This is the two opposite. Uh, well, I guess I see what you're saying. So I feel like the proof that they gave was what you needed. You needed the person who took the photograph, and then you needed somebody to corroborate the photograph. Yeah, that's, well, A, C, or D? 
Do you think the witness's corroborating testimony is unnecessary? Yeah. Maybe right. I, I really don't know. Like I said, I hadn't studied this. Well, let's go to it. Or it's hearsay. It could be. That yeah. was the other thing. Because it's kind of like it's a video. In yeah. Remember in the, the problem in the book? The woman makes the video. Oh, right, right. Yeah. I, I don't know if it's like the video, though. Yeah, I don't yeah, think it's... Alrighty, I'm going to go to the answer. Alrighty, it's B. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> it's that time of day. Jeez. <laughs> Only the witness's testimony is necessary to introduce the photograph. To be admissible, a photograph must be identified by a witness as a portrayal of a certain fact of certain facts relevant to the issue and verified by the witness correct representation of those facts it is sufficient if the witness who identifies the photograph is familiar with the scene or object depicted it is not necessary to call the photographer to authenticate the phot photograph here the actual uh, physical evidence appears the intersection most likely to be relevant to the matter uh, in which the accident occurred as a resident of the neighborhood in which the accident took place and someone who actually was at the scene the accident shortly after its occurrence, the witness is sufficiently familiar with the scene to testify the photograph is an accurate representation of the scene. Wow. We went for all of them except the right answer, right? We didn't even consider Yep. All right, 15, here we come. I think so. Let's see what the answers are. I'd say C. So, it's hearsay. Yes. But there's an exception. Yes. If it's hearsay, can it come in as substantive evidence? If there's an exception for it. Or can it only come in for its impeachment? Remember, if we just read that in another answer, like if it's hearsay, it can only come in to impeach. I think there's an exception. So you think it's A? Yeah. What did I think it was? It's C. Yeah. Yeah, it's C. Mm. <laughs> I just love it when I'm not. No, I don't. I, I think we should... All right, read it to me. The statement of the treaties is admissible to impeach and as substantive evidence. Under the federal rules, learned treaties can be used either for impeachment or as substantive evidence. One way the credibility of an expert witness may be attacked is by cross-examining him as to his general knowledge in the field, which is claiming to be an expert. This can be done by cross-examining the expert on statements contained in any specific publication that is established as reliable authority. Reliability of, well, this is reliability of a, of a, a, a publication. Yeah, we didn't really study this. Statements in learned statement contained in a treatise for, it's called to the attention of an expert witness on cross, or this is very specific. Yeah. This says, if admitted, the statement may be read into evidence but not received as an exhibit. So, does that Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, yeah, because a, a lot of the times, such as with past recollect, recorded recollection, mm -hmm. recollection recorded, you can read it to the jury. Like here, I think the example is, uh, but I think this example is helpful. A guy's been robbed, right? Mm -hmm. And... Um, the prosecution is prosecuting the defendant. He says, can you remember? It's two years ago. He says, I can't remember. Here's a document that you made to a police officer two years ago. He says, yes, I made it. I knew it at the time. 
and it can be read to the jury, but it can't be given to evidence. Because if it's given to evidence, they can take it into the jury room with them. That's past record recorded recollection, right? I think we should email Professor to say more about that. <laughs> Ask her about reading evidence to, or reading to the jury. I think it, it, it we should ask so what's her. What's the question? Is it substantive evidence? Yeah. Are things, are things read into evidence? All right, let's get to it. We put a substantial amount of time into this today, I'd say. Yeah, we've been here since almost around one, twelve thirty-five. Yeah, or even before that, right? I got here at noon, a little bit before noon. Did you? I saw you walked in. What time was oh, it? you did? <laughs> yeah. That's fine. Maybe it was. Maybe we're like 1230. Yeah, I don't know when you texted me. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, I'd say admissible hearsay. It's like co-conspirator, right? No, it's not co-conspirator. It's like excited utterance. The witnesses for various so the bank robbery, including a witness as his friend. He was seen entering a car, a group of people, including a witness and his friend. Wait, no, he was seen entering. Okay, established that the robber came out of the bank. He was seen entering a car, a group of people, including a witness and his friend. No, hold on. It established that as the robber came out of the bank, he was seen entering a car by a group of people. Included in that group of people oh, was okay. the witness yeah. and his friend. The witness is prepared to testify that as the car drove off, someone yelled. Someone in that group. Oh, so they're talking about the... They're like the license plate number or something like that. I don't like this question. Inadmissible? No, I think it's admissible. I think it's an excited utterance. So be? Yeah. D. It is B. Oh, <laughs> The French statement is admissible under excited utterance exception to the hearsay rule, though hearsay is generally inadmissible. Certain kinds of hearsay are deemed to be reliable enough to be admitted. One of these ex excited utterance. All right, yeah, this is excited utterance. Also, declaration was concerned. Facts. And, all righty. All right, two more. Motive proof. All right. Motive proof. Motive proof. Motive proof. You want to go with B? Oh, yeah, I think B sounds good to me. It's either B or D. I think it's good. Those at sixteen or seventeen? Yeah, it's B. Okay. Yeah.
All righty. The defense witness testimony should be admitted as proper impeachment for the prosecution's witness. Impeachment is casting adverse reflection on the veracity of a witness. A witness may be impeached by either cross-examination or extrinsic evidence, such as by putting other witnesses on the stand who contradict the witness's testimony. I think it's two of them. What do you think? C or D. Really? Yeah. Why is there insufficient evidence of chain of custody? I just think it's inadmissible. <laughs> yeah. I don't think it's admissible. I think it's A. C. Oh. <laughs> the testimony is inadmissible because it has not been shown that what happened to the blood, uh, what happened to the blood between the uh, time the officer took it and the time the chemist examined it. Officer took a while to take a blood sample. Real evidence. Drove off with it. Oh, and drove off with it. When you see something like that, something weird like that, and drove off with it, it's got to be a trigger. <laughs> well, I guess that was okay. it was good. We went over all of set three, right? Yep. Yeah. So that means we still have set four. Three sets to do on our.